coming to the decoder module okay so we know that in uh, amba asb uh, we are having one decoder module so that decoder module will tell which slave is uh, accessing the bus right now okay which slave is communicating with the master for that we need a decoder okay so uh, you can see here the decoder decodes the transfer address and select slaves on the bus appropriately so that is the responsibility of a decoder so the decoder in your design can select 16 slaves with 16 megabytes of address range of each slave okay actually in arm by ehb there are 32 bit address bit is there okay so they are telling that they can uh, uh, access near what 16 slaves they can select at the time 16 slave and 16 megabytes of address in for each slave they can allocate okay so that is the intention of this statement okay so they are actually this is the property of the decoder they are telling so it generate the bus error or non selected slave transfer the protected address area transfers okay so they are talking about these things slave transfer types and uh, address okay as you will see how they have implemented decoder that is more important okay ba is address bus okay so they are talking about address bus which is 32 bit right so you can uh, how many memory locations you can access so you can access to rest about 32 memory location now b transfer type okay what type of transfer uh, you are going to perform whether that is uh, sequential whether that is non sequential okay whether it is going to be uh, idle or any so that is the transfer type okay that it will indicate now production signals so these are some of the control signals uh, uh, basically these signals uh, are uh, used uh, uh, by the s master okay but uh, it's better right now don't concentrate on this uh, uh, production signals okay without uh, incomplete knowledge we should not use this production signals write signal so this is a control signal so this will tell whether you are going to write in the uh, uh, write uh, through the bus or you are going to read from a bus okay so b clock we know that uh, this is the bus clock then this is the reset then they are talking about the size of transfer whether 8 bit 16 bit or 32 bit then d select which slave you need to select okay so this is a decoded output okay decoder will take an address as an input and based on that it will select the slave then we are having b weight so it is a weight signal error response so last transfer signal so these are the signals which a slave can also uh, assert in between okay if slave is not ready to take the data during that time a slave can assert a weight signal okay coming to asb master okay so the master can initiate bus transfers by driving address and control signals okay so this is the responsibility of the uh, master so what it will do it will assert the appropriate control signals and address at the beginning of the transfer when uh, master is having the bus grant okay so when the bus master want to perform the data transfer it generate the request to the arbiter okay so this is the how how the initiation will happen first what will happen master will uh, in give a uh, request signal to the arbiter to get the bus grant okay so after that uh, that arbiter will uh, uh, process the request and give you the uh, give the respective uh, uh, master uh, grant and after that gra um, after getting the grant your master will sample the appropriate address and control lines appropriate uh, uh, address and control signals okay so the arbiter uh, and then after that in the bluetooth soc only the processor arm TD is a bus master and all other are peripheral and slaves so whatever uh, soc we have seen for bluetooth link controller in that they are assuming that only one master is there, that is arm processor now coming to asb slaves so apart from processor whatever modules are available in that soc like we have seen uart we have seen usb blue bluetooth link controller all those are slave okay slave modules so you need to have one slave interface like uh, asb slave interface with all these slave uh, modules okay now what they are trying to say is a slave respond to a request from the master and participate in the transfer so it also respond with error weight or successful completion of data transfer so they are trying to say means uh, uh, whenever uh, master uh, master will assemble some address or control information slave will respond to them uh, res respond to master with appropriate signals but suppose if your slave is not ready with the data during that time it will insert some weight states in in your bus okay or if uh, data is uh, uh, corrupted so it will give an error signal to the master so in that case master will retransmit the data okay now coming to the asb or apb bridge so we know that asb and apb bridge is like asb is a high performance bus 
so only you uh, you can connect a high performance peripheral with the asb bus okay but uh, in our soc we need uh, some uh, uh, low frequency uh, uh, peripherals also okay so in that case uh, uh, in that case we cannot uh, satisfy with the uh, uh, in that case we cannot use asb bus okay so in that case we have to use some low performance bus so that is apb bus so you have to convert the asb signal to the apb signal so you need a bridge okay that is what they are talking about asb to apb bridge so to apb you can connect like uart okay low bandwidth uh, peripherals like uart you can connect general purpose input output you can connect okay then you can connect like uh, interrupt controller so these all are the modules that you can connect with apb so how APB work? It latches the address data and control signals and perform the address decoding to generate the slave select signal for the peripheral on the APB. So this is the uh, how your APB is working. Okay. So they have shown the blo block diagram of the uh, ASB to APB uh, bridge. Actually, uh, this block diagram you can uh, get in uh, AMBA specification also. You can easily download download that thing from the net. Okay. So they have given the explanation.